If you have the fifth edition textbook, you'll find this information on page 514. And if you have the sixth edition, then you'll need to use or reference page 503 on towards um, this information. So to start things off, I want to go through the actual definitions here. So the first definition on here is confidence interval. And this is going to be a range of values that you would receive from a hypothesis test. And what a hypothesis test is, is, is a, I would call it a experiment where you're trying to figure out whether or not a particular theory or status quo is actually correct. So you would perform this test to test whether or not, you know, you should believe the status quo, what everyone believes, or this different theory. And those ranges of values that you receive while you're testing are called those confidence intervals, okay? Um, now, p-value is also very important to understand, and a, and a p-value is simply going to be the probability of making a type one error. Now, you're probably wondering what is a type one error? I don't know what it is. Um, and let's just go ahead and talk about that in more detail. So first off, when you're actually doing a hypothesis test, you're gonna have two possible conclusions that can you know, be the result. You can either have something called the status quo or um, something you know, else where you actually don't fit or get the results of the status quo. Okay, so the first term that you want to be aware of is called the null hypothesis. Now, the null hypothesis is going to be the belief that there is no association between the independent and dependent variables in a research study. This is the same thing as the status quo. This is pretty much saying that whatever you're testing or trying to um, use to try and um, prove that the status quo is incorrect has no relation. There is no relation between your new belief and that fact versus the alternate hypothesis where there is a association between the independent and dependent variable, which simply means that what the status quo or the belief is actually relates to this new idea. So there is some type of association. That's called the alternate hypothesis. A type two error occurs when you accept a false null hypothesis, a false negative, and a type one error occurs when you reject a true null hypothesis giving, given the values pre present in the sample a false positive. Now, all of that is confusing. Trust me, I understand. So to better explain this, I'm going to now present you guys with some examples. And I believe that this should help this all make sense. So I'm going to go on to the next slide here. And let's look at this scenario. Now, this scenario is coming directly from the textbook, OK? Now, in this example, they are trying to do a hypothesis test to figure out whether or not the average facility wait time is 60 minutes or less, OK? So the average wait time being 60 minutes or less in this scenario is considered the status quo, OK? That is seen as the fact, the true fact at that moment. However, they want to test that and see whether or not that is true or not, OK? So if they were to ask you, you know, based on the situation, you know, what is the null hypothesis? That's going to be your status quo, which is the average um, facility wait time is 60 minutes or less. Now, the alternate hypothesis is when you're questioning that status quo. So in the book, the hypothesis is going to be that the average facility wait time is more than 60 minutes. So they are challenging the status quo. 
okay? So you wanna understand those, those two definitions. Now, to the errors. A type one error in this scenario would be rejecting the status quo, meaning that you believe that the average wait time is more than 60 minutes and actually having the status quo be correct. So after doing the actual hypothesis testing, it comes to show that the average wait time is 60 minutes. So when you are rejecting the status quo and you believe that the status quo is actually incorrect and the status quo actually ends up being correct, you have committed a type one error, okay? A type two error would be concluding that the average wait time is 60 minutes or less. So you are choosing to believe the status quo. You are choosing to believe what people or what society believes that thing is and it's actually not the case, okay? So you're accepting the status quo and after doing that hypothesis test, it shows that it actually is, is not correct. Like the majority is incorrect. That is a type two error, okay? So this is the example that is presented in the book. Now let's do another example just to help you guys here because I know this is, this is complicated and I completely understand. Here's another example. This time we're gonna talk about driving. Driving a car from Dallas to Houston, okay? Now we're gonna say or um, state that the belief or the status quo is that it takes four hours or less to drive from Dallas to Houston. That's gonna be our status quo. So the alternate hypothesis would be you questioning that. So you saying that it takes more than four hours to drive from Dallas to Houston would be you questioning the status quo and ultimately having a alternate hypothesis. Now, when it comes down to the errors in this scenario, a type one error would be concluding that it takes more than four hours to drive from Dallas to Houston. So you are questioning the no hypothesis, right? Rejecting it. And, it, and, then, and then it actually turns out that it does only take four hours or less. So you're rejecting what is known as the true thing or like the the theory or the or the or the fact when actually the fact that everyone believes is actually true that is a type one error a type two in this scenario would be concluding that it takes four hours or less so you are agreeing with what society says right the status quo and it actually turns out that the status quo is incorrect. So maybe they did the testing and it took them four hours and 30 minutes to get to Houston. So you believe what they said, but when the testing was done, it actually did take longer than what people said. So that is a type two error, okay? So how they test you on this is they will give you and they, and this is not a guarantee, right? But if it's on your exam, they would either want you to understand and be able to identify what the type one error would be based on the scenario, what the hypothesis null would be based on the scenario. That's how they would test you on this concept. You also wanna be familiar with, the, um, with these symbols that are used. So right here, you'll see for no hypothesis, they have that you know um, symbol there, and they also have another symbol that is over here as well that they use. So you also want to know those you know letters and symbols in case they test you on that. 
outside of that, I also wanted to just kind of make sure that this kind of really sunk in, right, with the type one and type two. So I'm going to use real examples from our real world here, right? So here to the left, I have an artist here, a rapper by the name of B.O.B. Now, the reason why I'm using him here is because he believes that the earth is flat, okay? That is his belief. And as we all know, from school and from reading, the earth is not flat, but he believes that the earth is flat. So he is rejecting the null hypothesis. He believes that the earth is flat, even though it's not, okay? So he is a good example of someone that is committing a type one error, okay? And just to go back to the notes, just to sink it in again, he is rejecting the status quo. Second example. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard of this um, gentleman yet. His name, I believe, is Harold Camping. And he is very popular because he, um, years ago, over, over 10 years ago, um, stated and told his, his, his followers or followers that the rapture was coming on May 21st, 2011. So he was preaching and evangelizing the people that the world was going to end, literally guys, over 10 years ago. We're still here though, but he believed that the world was going to end. And so he had followers that truly believed that the world was going to end. So they were, you know, selling their homes and doing all these things in preparation. So those people that believed in what he was saying, they were committing a type two error, okay? They were choosing to believe what he was saying, but what, but what he was saying was not correct, okay? So that is a type to error. And I'm going to go back to the notes just to kind of um, help support this a little bit, right? So a type two error. So they accepted his, and this is not the, but his status quo. So, so his status quo was that the world was going to end 10 years ago. So they chose to accept his belief and it turned out that he was incorrect because we are all still here on earth, right? Take studying for Aria, okay? So just to hopefully help you guys understand that better, I hope that those two real life people help to uh, supplement this content for you. So I will provide you guys with all of these notes to use to study. And, and one thing that you guys already have in your notes is gonna be this question. So this is a good example of a real question that you may see on your exam where they give you a scenario and then ask you under which conditions would the mayor commit a type one error. So you would then have to be able to read this actual scenario, actually be able to identify this. And, this, and these numbers don't really matter to be honest, but um, you'll see here in your notes the actual answer and they also define what things mean. So um, as you can see, this was very long and required a lot of um, explaining. And so I hope that this helps. And if you still have questions on this afterwards, please let me know. Are you looking for a quality RIA test prep course? Well, look no further. I want to present to you the RIA Essential On Demand course. I have taught hundreds of students in person and online, and I am excited to be your instructor on your RIA journey. As a student of this course, you're going to get access to over eight hours of video content that contains notes, mnemonics, quizzes, and more. And yes, guys, I said video content. No PDFs to study from here. Look forward to 90 days of contested content to assist you on earning your RIA certification. In this course, you are going to learn 
health IT law, data governance, classifications and codes, database management and design, record retention, data visualization, levels of measurement, RIA certified. With our premium package, we also offer our RIA guarantee. Pass your RIA exam or our tutorial service is free. Registration is open now. Get started at www.riaessential.com. See you soon. Okay.